Let's talk about another walking simulator, the Order 1886. Okay, not a walking simulator, but the order is split up into three things, and walking is very much one of them, with the other being a heavy emphasis on story, while gameplay comes in every once in a while. So since the story is what the game spends most of its focus on, I'll cover that first. Now, this is a basic layout of the events of the entire story, so... Spoilers. We start off with Galahad being tortured before he escapes. Then we jump back a month to where Galahad is the Knight of the Order. He is sent out to deal with the rebel insurgents. They deal with the rebels, but something is amiss. Percival wants to go into Whitechapel, but they need permission from the council. They get denied. Although Percival later talks to Lucan and gets permission. Kind of on the down low. The group then goes on to fight rebels in Whitechapel and then an airship. Percival dies. We fight some rebels on a bridge before plot twist, the rebels are actually the good guys. Galahad goes with the rebel leader and Lucan to the mansion of the real baddie for evidence to prove that he's the baddie. Lucan betrays them, leading us to where the game began. Then we kill Lucan. It's pretty standard, but it could have been fine if it were not for one big peeve I have with the setup. Why is Lucan's betrayal a big deal? We hardly know the dude. He has a slightly higher rank than us, and he's the brother of the chick that might have a romance with Galahad. I believe that there is an easy solution to this. Make him Percival. If Percival hadn't died mid-game and he was the one that betrayed Galahad, it would have struck a much bigger blow, because we know him and the twist would have been greater as Percival was the one spearheading the investigation which could have been a cover-up just to decimate the rebels. Also, Percival had a killer beard and this scrub couldn't grow facial hair. Another peeve with the story aspect, we can't skip cutscenes. The game has so many cutscenes and after the first playthrough, a lot of the cutscenes are just boring. Like, man, this problem was solved back in the PS2 era. In addition, there are parts like this. Why do you block my way? Why do you make me slowly walk around the table? It takes forever. Partly because the jog isn't always available. Sometimes you can jog with L3, sometimes you can't. This is just annoying. Now that we've gone to the gameplay, I actually think it's a lot of fun, especially towards the end of the game. The end of the game throws a lot of enemies at you, and that makes things more challenging. There's a section where you know she's gonna go down, because there are guns laid all about, and you know that once you get through the door, it's gonna be a shitstorm. The first third of the game lacked that intensity, and although the bridge and warehouse sections got closer to that point, the constant cutscenes broke any flow that had been built up, which is a shame as shown at the end of the game it can be a lot of fun when the developers let the player loose. Also add more dick punching. Screw all the other animations, make dick punching Galahad's melee attack, then put it on the back of the box as a selling point. I'm sold. An addition that they could have added to the game was co-op, because the trailers looked like they would be co-op, the game cover looked like they would be co-op, and the game has a character join you for pretty much the entire game. There was no need to shoehorn it in, because it was all done. All you needed to do was make it possible. Just give me a reason to buy the really cool looking PS4 controller. But yeah, so that was the video. If you like Overwatch, check out my friend Pyro's video. And if you like this, then subscribe, maybe? Alright, I'll see you around next time.